What's up everyone? My name is Will and this is my final pickup video for the year 2013. I'm just going to kind of go into really quickly what I've gotten today and then some of the stuff that I've gotten over the last couple weeks. Um, no use wasting time so I might as well just get into it. Uh, today was not so much a great day uh, for actual video games but I did get lots of little odds and ends uh, which seems to be the case most of the time. Uh, picked up quite a few controllers, uh, got some random cords here and there, and a couple strategy guides. So here we go. Two things that I've gotten for my collection, which I will not be trying to trade or sell or whatever. Um, I got myself two colored PlayStation controllers. Uh, these are for the PlayStation One. I run across these, you know, colored controllers quite a bit, but they're usually like five or six bucks. I'm just not willing to pay that much for a PlayStation One controller. I picked these up at Goodwill. Uh, this one didn't have a price tag. This one actually had two price tags on it. One was for $3.99 and one was $1.99. And I don't know why they do that sometimes, where they'll put two price tags on one controller and different prices. So just kind of peel off the $3.99 price tag and left the $1.99 price tag on it and grabbed both of them. Got both of them for $2. Um, I found an original NES controller. This is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's not a whole lot of yellowing or scratches or all any of that stuff. Uh, this was two dollars also. Later on in the day, I found this Performance Nintendo 64 controller for a dollar. I'm not a big fan of third-party controllers, but these uh, Performance controllers they actually have really nice sticks on them. I I've never actually run across one that had a, a bad stick, and it seems like the thumbstick is actually better built than the original Nintendo thumbstick. So I don't know, it's, it, as far as third party controllers are concerned, this is actually a pretty decent one. And for a dollar, I was not going to walk away from it. Um, I don't really know why I got this. I, I think I probably have plenty of these, but this is a PlayStation 1 AV cord. I guess you can never have too many, right? So there's that. A uh, couple of strategy guys that I picked up. I found The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. This one was... I want to say 450. Um, I kind of thought I had this one, but I didn't, and I'm glad I, I got it. Um, 450 is kind of a lot for a strategy guide, for you strategy guide. But if I ever wanted to get rid of this, I'm sure I could. It would sell well. But I kind of got into collecting strategy guides over the last year. Um, I bought them here and there for games that I really, really liked and really enjoyed and wanted to read more about. Not necessarily. I like to figure out puzzles and all that stuff. I just like reading about them. Usually after I finish the game, I'll go and read the strategy guide. But um, over the last year, since I'm going to thrift stores and whatnot, uh, I've been able to find quite a few of them for, you know, usually cheap. This is kind of an exception, but usually they're like a dollar or so. So I've kind of gotten into the habit of collecting for games that I do actually like. I got Mario Kart 64. This was four bucks, I think, at the same flea market. And then at a Savers, I found Resident Evil 3 Nemesis for, I think it was a dollar and two cents or something like that. Also today, I got myself a first party GameCube memory card for a dollar. Now this flea market that I go to, they always sell their memory cards for a dollar. So if I ever see them there, I generally pick them up just because why not. I don't think you can ever have too many memory cards either. So I got a red memory card for the PlayStation 2. Now, I kind of regret this a little bit, but I got a Game Boy Color. It's in pretty decent shape. Uh, it's the sticker where the barcode on the back is, is ripped off for the most part. The screen has a couple little scratches, but otherwise it's not in bad shape at all. This was $7. And um, I actually have three Game Boy, four actually, four Game Boy Colors. All different colors, and I actually did have this one already, so that's why I kind of regret it. But... I've uh, recently gotten into collecting different variations of the Game Boy. Um, got a copy of Boogerman for the Sega Genesis for $2. WCW Mayhem, PlayStation 1, this was a dollar. I'm sure this game is absolutely terrible. I don't remember playing this one. I think I, I might have, but I don't remember. I can say that just about every wrestling game on the original PlayStation was awful. The exception was probably SmackDown. It was tolerable, but it was not very good at all. Um, and then I got a copy of Lord of the Rings for the GameCube. And this is complete. This was two bucks. So 
So now, in no particular order, the stuff that I've gotten over the last couple of weeks, or a week and a half probably, more accurate. Um, got a copy of TMNT for PlayStation 2, and I think this one was $2.99. Uh, also complete. I used to love Ninja Turtle games like back in the old day with the you know Super Nintendo and Nintendo and all that. Um, I was really excited for the first Ninja Turtle game that came out on PlayStation 2 back in I think like 2000 or 2001, and I just I didn't like it at all. I could never get into it. So as the next wave of Ninja Turtle games came out, I pretty much missed all that stuff. This one actually looked pretty decent, so uh, I've been looking out for it for a while, and I'm glad I was able to find it, get it for a cheap price. I got a copy of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess for the Wii. I already had this. This one was $6 and this one I'm actually going to go ahead and send to my daughter because she's starting to get into the Zelda games which I think is really cool. A couple weeks ago I picked up a pair of Game Boy Pockets. This one uh, actually has a screen protector broken off and there's a little bit of bleeding right down there at the bottom of the screen. I actually took this apart and you can actually see some bleeding. some. LCD bleeding on the sides too, but other than that it works you know, pretty well. You can't really notice it because it's at the very edges of the screen. Uh, these were $10 each and I used a 30% discount card to get $3 off, so they were $7 each. Um, probably one of the best things that I found, I found them on the same day. I got a, a pair of uh, colored Nintendo 64's. They both had jumper packs in them. I actually put my own expansion pack in here because this is going to take the place of my second uh, N64, the one that I actually play. These were $19.99 each. Uh, this one is missing the expansion port uh, cover, but um, they didn't come in with any cords or any controllers or anything like that. Um, $20 is a lot more than I would ever normally pay for a Nintendo 64, but I've never uh, run across one of the colored versions. So to pick two up in the same day from the same store, I just, there was no way I was walking away from that. Uh, something I was extremely surprised to see earlier this week, um, I guess as this new wave of next-gen consoles uh, has come out, people have started getting rid of their older stuff, you know, what was current gen, the last gen stuff. Um, I found an Xbox 360 at Savers for 20 bucks. Had no cores, no controllers, no hard drive. Um, I got this basically because, you know, as these, uh, as this next generation starts to become more common for gamers to own, I'm assuming that a lot more of these are going to show up in the thrift stores. And obviously, especially with these older versions of the 360, they're going to have the red ring issue. I figure $20 is not a bad price for like a trainer system. Something I can take apart and tinker with and kind of figure out um, what the, the intricacies are um, and, and just kind of learn my way around the 360. Um, these, the broken systems still sell for more than $20 on eBay and then you got to worry about shipping too. So I figured, you know, at worst, it'll be just that. It'll be something I can take apart and tinker with. And uh, to my shock and surprise, this actually works. There's no red ring issue. I, I totally expected it to red ring. Um, but I sat down and I played this for a good three hours or so with no issue. And I actually had it sitting on a carpet. You know, so if there was going to be a red ring issue, especially, I mean, due to overheating anyway, um, it would happen. So uh, it's actually in really, really nice shape. Um, and I don't see any issues with it. I'm going to keep on, you know, playing it and testing it to see if it, if something happens. But I don't think it will. It seems to be a working system. So um, now that I know it's a working system, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it because I already have two 360s and I don't need another one. Um, so I'd like to say I'm going to resell it, but. I haven't been having a lot of great uh, luck with reselling and I'm just kind of fed up and, and I've had it up to here with selling stuff on eBay and trying to do Craigslist. So uh, I will see if I can gift it to somebody or you know maybe trade, I don't know, the, the possibilities of that are pretty low. And that's going to lead me to the last thing, a note that I've gotten over the last couple weeks. Um, 
the one savers that I actually got those Nintendo 64s at, um, I've been getting my ass kicked by scanner resellers, the guys who kind of spend all day in the store filling up a cart with shit and just like sitting in the corner scanning barcodes and looking stuff up online. Uh, earlier this week, there was actually a guy who, and I swear if I had gotten there 10 minutes earlier, I would have gotten the games, but he had a, a big stack of GameCube games. I saw Mario Kart 64, I saw Luigi's Mansion, um, there was a Zelda game. I didn't catch what it was, but there was, there was a bunch of Mario games in that stack. And I was watching them as he was like popping them open, checking the discs and all that. They actually were in pristine condition, all had manuals. And I was so pissed off. More because I've been wanting Luigi's Mansion for a long time, and I've never run across a copy, a decent copy, that, that looked playable anyway. So I was super, super pissed about that. Um, and then uh, a couple days later, you know, I, I've seen them actually every day this week. I've gone in there every day trying to just, I don't know, there's like this competitive nature in me when I see somebody like on my turf. You know, grabbing my shit. I've got this like com super competitive nature where I, I kind of take it personally. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna beat this guy, and I'm gonna get to the good shit the next day. And it's just each successive day, like he's there every day. So, um, I think it was Friday. I want to say it was yeah, Friday afternoon where I roll up, and you know there he was again, and he was going through the games, and I just figured, you know what, I'm not even gonna bother looking at games. I walked over to the systems. And there was another fucking reseller with his fucking cell phone. Um, I don't know what he had. I did see that he had one of those Atari flashbacks. It was the uh, Flashback 2. And I've been kind of wanting one of those two. Only because, not so much because I want to play it. You know, if I want to play Atari games, I'll play my 2600. But I just think that particular, you know, I think it was the, the Flashback 1 and 2. Uh, those were, you know, the cooler, you know, flashback systems. Those are some of the cooler plug and plays to have. I just kind of like having them just for, for either decoration or just to kind of say that I have them. So this fuck, you know, he grabbed that before I could. And I was just like super disgruntled. Um, so, um, and I don't remember who it was. Um, there's, there's another YouTuber who does like pickup videos and whatnot. And he suggested in one of his videos that, you know, you buy uh, Texas Instruments uh, scientific calculators because they sell well. So... I went and pulled out my phone as I saw a, I think it was a TI-83, um, and it seems to sell for like 25, 40 bucks, and I'll do whatever I can to get a little extra money to kind of feed this little habit, because it is expensive. So I took my little calculator up to the register, and, and the older reseller guy who, you know, snagged that uh, stack of GameCube games from me earlier, you know, he tapped me on the shoulder while I was in line, and he's like, hey, there's a, a box of GameCube uh, stuff behind the puzzles and um, and board games. So I, I jumped out of line and I went over to where he told me to go and sure enough there was a box that had a silver GameCube system with uh, a copy of Bratz inside. It came with, and I only have one of them out here, there was a silver controller and then there was this black controller uh, it came with all the hookups and then two microphones also. So the, the box was marked at 25 bucks, and it wound up being $17 and change with the 30% uh, discount card that I had. Um, and I know I need another GameCube like I need another hole in my ass. But, you know, stuff like that is kind of cool to find. You know, I just, I, for whatever reason, I enjoy getting the good deals. I enjoy that, that whole hunting process. But, um... And this is like totally off topic, well, not really off topic, but it doesn't actually have to do with specific pickups. But I started collecting video games after a long layoff in no, it was August of 2012. Uh, and since then, I've accumulated a lot of stuff. And I'll actually go ahead and like... I'll do a little walk around of my room of extra crap. You know, I've got a lot of systems and I have backups for those systems. I don't mind having a backup of each system, but I've kind of gone overboard over the last year or so, or year and a half, really. Um, and I, it's crazy how it started. Basically, what happened was uh, when I started going to thrift stores, and this was probably. A little, November of last year where I actually started hitting the thrift stores looking for stuff 
I think I was just so blown away by the fact that I can get these game systems so cheap that you know a backup turned into a backup of a backup and then I just started buying them because they were cheap um, and they just kind of accumulated and it got to a point where I was like okay you know I find a game system here I find controllers there I find you know cords and whatnot here so if I can piece them together for cheap enough I can throw them on eBay and make a little bit of extra money um, like I said earlier, it's just I, I've gotten so so sick of of dealing with eBay and dealing with Craigslist and dealing with people. Um, I'm, I'm just tired of, of buying so much crap that I already have <clears throat> um, because you know I don't really make a lot of money on these systems. I'll probably make if it's a a good deal for me, I'll make like ten dollars on the system because I'm not gonna charge somebody seventy dollars for. Or ask somebody seventy dollars for like a Dreamcast or uh, Super Nintendo. And I see, and it is frustrating because I see people on eBay selling Nintendos, NESs, regular ass NES with two controllers, and Mario Brothers Duck Hunt for a hundred and thirty dollars, and people buy it. What in the hell is wrong with people? I don't know how how drunk these people are when they make their bids, but I mean it's it's insane. I have a hard time usually selling stuff at forty or fifty dollars, like for a Nintendo and, and some games, um, because I want I got, I got to offset the cost of the stuff that I bought. I want to make a little bit of money just to make it worth it and offset all the, um, the charges, the eBay and the PayPal stuff. So I, I've kind of got to price them high. Like I, if it was just locally, I'd probably sell for like thirty, thirty-five dollars, no problem. But um, Anyway, I've just gotten so sick of, of dealing with all that, and you know, I've had troublesome customers, and it's just like this stuff is just not worth the effort. I love going out hunting, and I love you know finding treasure. Uh, but if it's stuff that I already have, I'll pick it up, I'll look at it, and I'm like, yeah, I found it. I'm gonna throw it back. You know, it, it's gonna be like fishing. Hold it up, take a picture, and toss it back. Uh, because I've, like I said, I've accumulated a lot of shit, and it's just, it's not worth the headache trying to sell this stuff. Because I spend a lot of time cleaning this stuff up. I usually spend some time on repairs, um, and then, like I said, just dealing with the people is just fucking frustrating. So, with that being said, if anybody's looking for any particular system, uh, I have the common stuff: NES, Super NES, N64, GameCube. PlayStation 2, PlayStation, uh, Xbox, tons of Sega Genesis's, uh, Sega CD, I, what else, 32X, so yeah, I mean, just hit me up and I'll, I'll try to hit you guys with the best price I possibly can, you know, it's going to have to cover my costs and it's going to have to cover shipping, but uh, I'm not going to price gouge, I just, I just want a lot of this stuff gone, I just, I'm tired of dealing with all of it. I, I really feel like I've lost sight of why I started collecting in the first place because now I seem to be collecting more with the idea of reselling in mind rather than collecting stuff that I don't have and stuff that I want. You know, it's, it's really taking a lot of the joy out of what I do and I, and I don't want to be one of those used bag resellers anyway. So, you know, I, I've got to get myself back on track, get my mind back on track as far as collecting and I want to, you know, this stuff has got to take a step back too because I've got so much other stuff that I want to do. Uh, with my time and so much other stuff I want to focus on. So, with that being said, um, and I probably won't, I shouldn't even put this in the video, but uh, I, I went to Target today. I was just doing some regular shopping and I figured let me go over to the electronics section and see if they have any video games on clearance because the new systems are out. They're probably going to start trying to push all the old stuff out. Um, and it just so happens that they had uh, PlayStation 4 and uh, two Xbox Ones. And I know they've been sold out for a while, um, and my boss actually mentioned to me, and mentioned to everybody in the office really, that if we ever come across a PlayStation 4, pick it up because she's trying to get one for her son. I tried calling her today while I was at the store. She didn't pick up, so I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and get it for her. So I bought it, um, and I, I left the store, put all the stuff in my car, and I kind of went back and I was like, man, they got two Xbox Ones check eBay real quick and they were still as of today they they had auctions ending where the final price was seven eight hundred dollars I mean people were paying eight hundred dollars for shipping and you know paying like thirty bucks for the console which is retarded but 
uh, and it, it's a big mistake for me, but I decided I was going to go back and I actually picked up both the Xbox Ones. Now, I have zero interest in PlayStation 4 or Xbox One at this point, um, just because the price of the console was high. Uh, Xbox Ones are still, just like every other Microsoft console when they first came out, all sorts of problems. So, you know, there's nothing I'm really interested in either at this point. I can wait a year or two years and, and get one down the line if something good comes out. But um, that was a mistake, I feel like. Uh, I put them on Craigslist. I put them on eBay. Uh, eBay is a no-go. Uh, Craigslist, people are just, you know, sending me offers for, you know, I'll, I'll change my laptop or I'll, ch I'll change my Android phone. You know, stupid crap that I don't want. So, I do still have the receipts. I'm probably just going to take them back on Monday. Um, it was, it was kind of retarded, and that's what I'm saying, like, I've gotten so heavily into this reseller mindset, you know, it's, it's totally, completely taking me away from the reason I started doing this in the first place. One of my goals for the year 2014, especially game-related, was to kind of get rid of all the backlog of shit, you know, the, the extra crap that I have, and have all that stuff just kind of sustain my collecting um, hobby throughout the year. Uh, you know, I'll still buy stuff here and there. You know where it, if I have it or if I don't want it and I know I can sell it I'll probably buy it just to sell it anyway just to kind of keep the, the hobby going but uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to use my income for this stuff anymore either but at the same time I also got to like I said get out of this stupid reseller mindset you know I know things like Sega Genesis Sega Dreamcast mostly Sega systems in general don't sell very well so to buy a Sega Genesis for like five or six bucks by itself quite honestly is not a good deal for me or anybody else out there because the cost of controllers, like even if you find them at the thrift store, cost of controllers and all the hookups and stuff, you're not going to make any money, man. Especially on eBay because they take so much of the cut. But um, it's, it's late as hell. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. But anyway, uh, I'll probably try to get this video out this week. Um, I got one more that I want to do where I just want to talk about like my top gaming pickups of this year. I probably my, like my goals for 2014, and, and ask you guys what your uh, your top pickups were also. So so I'll do that, and then that'll probably be it. Well, that'll be it for this year, and I don't know how much I'm gonna do next year um, because I got a lot of other stuff personally that I need to take care of, and I need for all this to kind of take a step back. I appreciate anybody who's stuck with me throughout the entire time that I've been doing my videos. I appreciate all my subscribers. I appreciate everybody who's actually sat here and listened to me ramble for however long this video is actually going to be because I know I talk a lot in these videos which is probably a lot more than I talk throughout the entire day so um, yeah um, have a good holiday season have a good new year and I will catch you later